an insane workplace contract. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because, well, news.com was sharing or wrote an article about an insane workplace contract. These terrible conditions this person was required to sign before employment. Now, of course, it comes from Reddit, it comes from anti-work, and let's have a look at these conditions. And you tell me if you think what they're asking people to pledge is insane, because honestly, I think it's just a really smart way to weed out people who are not a cultural fit, you know, to get rid of all of the lazy bludger problem makers. So, a recent sweat pledge my wife was asked to sign before employment. Okay, so before before you start working, you're asked to sign this. So, I, I, frankly, I think this is a great way to weed out people you don't want in your organization. There's nothing wrong with it. Let, let's have a look at these issues and tell me if you think they're uh, well, inappropriate or if they would impact your ability to work somewhere. So, the sweat pledge. Skill and work ethic aren't taboo. Because I'm of the opinion that having a job is a privilege. It's not a right. Not everyone is a, is, has a right to be employed. You're lucky to have a job. You need to work to get a job. You need to get skills. So someone wants to give you a job. Some people t- seem to think everyone should just have a job. They think it's a right. Any right that is given to you is taken from someone else. So, yeah, you've got to be careful with how you see the world. Because if you think you're just entitled to a job... Good luck there, mate. Good, good luck, Snowflake. you got to work for it. And that, that's, just, that's life in general. So let's have a look here. Maybe, maybe I'm just too much of an old boomer now. So number one, I believe that I won the greatest lottery of all time. I'm alive. I walk the earth. I live in America. And above all things, I am grateful. Well, there are many advantages you have to living in America as opposed to other countries, everyone. So, yeah, I mean, what's wrong with that? Even here in Australia, we are really lucky. We've got it really good. There's a whole lot of problems, but compared to other parts in the world, it could be worse. And this is all about framing. You want people that have a positive outlook on life. You don't want negative Nancys. So two, I believe that I am entitled to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Okay, yeah, that's that'd be great if we could get that enshrined here in Australia too. Nothing more. I also understand that happiness and the pursuit of happiness are not the same thing. I like that that take. So right now, nothing I disagree with. Three, I believe there's no such thing as a bad job. I believe that all jobs are opportunities and it is up to me to make the best of them. Now, I think that understanding can come with age. There are jobs that... Oh, there can be jobs that don't suit you at a time or jobs that are in a bad environment. You've got to make the best of it. You've got to make the best of it and take what you can from it. You know, it's not your entire life. If you're in a job where you're not happy, you should find other opportunities. You should build your skills up so you can. Four, I do not follow my passion. I bring it with me. I believe that any job can be done, can be done with passion and enthusiasm. That's harder to do sometimes when you're really stuck. I guess it comes down to the individual. It's a mindset that you have to have. Five, I believe my safety is my responsibility. I understand that being in compliance does not necessarily keep me out of danger. Now, this is a good thing to highlight to people. It won't have any legal grounding at all it's still going to be the responsibility of the employer to ensure a safe environment for their staff. I remember I had to do it. I, we, had, we were sharing, we were in the back of a warehouse. We had this big office space, much bigger than we needed, but right at the back, and it looked great. I guess we wanted to show off. We were young and stupid, or younger and stupider. And one day, because the landlord was an industrial designer, they were cutting up a whole lot of furniture. So there was sawdust all through this warehouse space that you had to go through to get to our office. So I had to evacuate the whole office and get everyone to work remotely because I couldn't have people exposed to the toxins. You know, making wood, cutting it all with all the chemicals and all the glues that are in it, it's not, it's not that good for you guys. It is the responsibility of the employer, but the employee can't just leave it to other people. You, know, you need to be sensible. Six, 
I believe the best way to distinguish myself at work is to show up early, stay late, and cheerfully volunteer for every crappy task there is. Now, here's the thing. We had one guy who, it was a cultural difference. He was Korean, and he would just work insane hours, but he'd never get anything done. He'd never get anything done. And we had another two people that we hired, both at the same time, a uh, student male and female. The bloke, he would always take every opportunity we had on there. We've got this job. We want someone to step up and take the, you know, the role managing it. He'd do that. The girl wouldn't do any of it. Rachel pulled her aside and said, you're going to be left behind. She was frustrated. Uh, you're going to be left behind because uh, such and such is taking all of these opportunities. You're not stepping up. She didn't care. She wasn't interested. There, there we go, guys. I've just explained why there's an earnings gap between the genders. Anyway, I believe that the most annoying sound in the world are whinging and complaining. I will never make them. If I'm unhappy at work, I will either find a new job or find a way to be happy. Yeah, that's nothing wrong with that. And it's true. You don't really know how annoying whinging and complaining is until you have a bunch of kids. That gets worse. Clean the house, do the chores, do the dishes. Ah, yeah, no. Eight, I believe that my education is my responsibility and absolutely critical to my success. I'm motivated to learn as much as I can from whatever sources are available to me. I 100 million percent agree with that. And I mean, YouTube is an example of that, everyone. Right there, you can learn new skills all the time. We would, uh, what we'd end up doing we got Linda, we subscribed to Linda before it was bought by LinkedIn. And we would, when people started, they would have a week of training just going through the entire course to learn the software that we used at Rivet. Because, you know, we would invest the time. We'd give them a week's pay to learn it. And you could learn, see pretty quick if someone knew what they were doing or not. I remember we hired one girl and she was just, she showed us all the, the work and everything and it looked all good. And she was a graduate from overseas and she's just useless. Just so slow, had no idea. So you got to let him go. But it's your responsibility to learn. I remember some people, we said, okay, we've, we're going to give you a job. We'll give you access to this software. Can you train yourself up on it before you get in? You've got a bit of time, do it after hours. And then you would see if people have the, energy, the effort to put in to learn this. And these aren't skills that are useless, everyone. Learning how to draft in Built with CAD, building information modeling software in Rivet or ArchiCAD or even MicroStation. Those are skills that can get you jobs forever and they, that you can use all the time. So you'd see if someone was thinking about their career long term, if they'd step up and put the extra effort in. To me, that just seemed normal. So, nine. I believe that I am uh, the product of my choices, not my circumstances. I will never blame anyone for my shortcomings, and will never accept credit for something I did not do. Wow. That, I mean, I can see how in America that would really piss off a whole lot of lefties, a whole lot of woke lefties, where victimhood is now a commodity, where people are using victimhood to get political leverage, to get money, to get free stuff. It's, it's bullshit. I mean, this, this is just sensible, normal thinking, or it used to be. The problem is we've gone down this social justice world. So yeah, that, I mean, that's true. You are the product of your choices. And for some people, that's really hard to hear. And we'll see it. We will see articles appear uh, every day now with because you know, we're starting to hear a recession. Interest rates are going up. Just wait to see articles from the a ABC where they trot someone out and they're going, I didn't know the bank would lend me so much. I have to, you know, I have to skip a meal to, to pay my mortgage now. Boo hoo hoo. Yeah, that's what we're going to hear. Okay, we will hear that because... We're in a world where people like to blame others. No one take, likes to take responsibility. And that's life, guys. Once you learn that and go with it, it you know, it's good. Ten. I mean, all of it, nothing here seems unusual to me. All of this seems fantastic. And it's going to weed out the crap. This is the best way you can weed out all the shit you don't want. The bad people, the bad attitudes, the, pe <laughs> the people that you don't want to uh, influence your culture. You get a wrong person in an organization, it can destroy an entire business. It can destroy culture. It can destroy the teamwork you've got going. So, 10. I understand that the world is not fair. Oh, boy. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Yes. 
the world isn't fair. That's just part of life, guys. Some people actually have to pay for regular haircuts. They weren't blessed with a beautiful, low-cost, low maintenance, bald head. Oh, actually, right, the blades are going up, so it is a bit more expensive. But you know what I mean, guys. Life isn't fair. You deal with it. I do not resent the success of others. Now, that the tall poppy bullshit, I think that's a big problem here in Australia. I think it's a really big problem. And, you know, honestly, I think Labor plays to that a lot. So, 11. I believe that all people are created equal. I also believe that people make choices. Some choose to be lazy. Some choose to sleep in. I choose to work my butt off. Okay? That's good. Nothing wrong with that. That's true. I slept in today. I chose to. (laughs) But I did work very late the night before. 12. I believe that a cell phone is not a priority and I can work my shift without using it. If I have kids, I remember when they, I used to have to call work and ask them by the full name and they can do the same. So you want the kids to call the, call the office. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. I didn't want people playing on cell phones. We, we got to a point where we, didn't, we only had one earphone in for music so people could still answer calls. We still allowed music. Rachel wouldn't let me ban it all. Stay in your lane, do your job to the best of your ability. Okay, so that's the sweat pledge. These are the conditions that they're putting up to people. Nothing here seems unusual. Nothing here seems excessive. If you think any there's problems with any of these, I think you need to be a bit introspective, everyone. Nothing here it seems out of the ordinary. And what it's going to do is it's going to weed out the people. So let's have a look at some of the comments from the anti-work crowd on Reddit, guys. You know, Let, Let's have a look here. So, F, I have a job that I actually don't mind. If they made me sign this, I'd immediately start trying to find something else for money. Well, yeah, that's nothing wrong with that. If you're not happy with it, find somewhere else. Here's another one. They come off as controlling and lacking confidence in their own ability to be a good place to work. See, he doesn't get it. Imagine signing something like this. About cont- uh, in other context, dating. It's, well, it's got nothing to do with dating. Uh, legit came here to say that I love and enjoy my job. They pull some shit like this and it would be my last day. I mean, look at this. Look at these people. So entitled. There, there's nothing here that... I guess this is, maybe it's a generational thing. Is there nothing legal about this? Illegal about it? Wow, I mean, okay, so here we go. These are the people that are the problem. So, guys, let, let's have a talk about this. Maybe I'm just old-fashioned, but nothing here seems unusual. Nothing here seems inappropriate. Nothing here seems illegal. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts on this one in the comments down below, guys. Would you sign a pledge like this? Would you make your employees sign it? Many, A lot of this I would just consider unwritten common sense. Maybe I'm just getting old. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one in the comments below. If you're a fan and want to help out, there are a few ways you can. You can financially support us by joining on YouTube or Patreon, using any of our referral links from Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. Or if you need architectural services, give us a call. We've got a lot of education, modular, and resource resource sector experience. Take care, guys. I'll see you next time. Uh, I don't know. Are people just too entitled? These rules don't seem unusual. This pledge doesn't seem excessive. It's To me, this seems like common sense. Or is that the problem? I'm not the young demo anymore. That could be it.